And uh, I just hope uh, that you all are safe, healthy, uh, uh, feeling good, okay? And so I'm going to be as uh, clear and concise as possible, all right? Uh, <clears throat> note that today we begin a new poetry unit, all right? Um, and just so you know uh, that uh, it is not essay writing. You know, I know students always think, oh, essay writing must be the best type of writing in the world. It must be the most important type of writing because, um, you know, that's what they have us write all the time. So it must be, that must be the best type and the uh, most efficient use of language that ever existed, right? That must be the most beautiful uh, um, way to express your ideas is through essay writing, right? And no, that is not true. The most impactful studied form of language in the world, uh, what has been regarded as the greatest use of language is not essay writing, but poetry. Poetry. Now, in the past, to be educated meant you studied the classics, literature, poetry. You know, I don't know how many of you know, but an English major is usually someone who studies literature, which a big chunk of that is poetry, right? So some of you might might be questioning, like, why then why? Why poetry? I, you know, poetry is confusing. Hey, may, maybe you don't even like poetry that much. You know what I mean? Um, all right, so uh, why poetry? Poetry offers you images, man. You get to see the world inside of your mind through the words of someone else. It triggers ideas. All right, which make people philosophize, which make them follow their ideas, which they end up writing essays about or songs to. Okay, um, it's a very precise use of language where the focus is on the words. Supposedly in poetry, if it's good poetry, there are no words that are there by mistake. The words, every single word is there for a reason. So it, you know, by studying poetry, you become a more precise person in the way that you use your words, in the way that you think, uh, in the way that you reflect, right? Uh, and, uh, and of course, one of the big reasons for poetry is that Poetry is beautiful, right? There is an aesthetic enthusiasm attached to uh, writing poetry and to reading poetry, right? <clears throat> and I, I, I would argue that probably the main reason for this is the feeling that poetry gives us, right? Uh, poetry gives us feeling, feeling, right? Um, and we're not just involved in our intellect, we're involved with the whole concept of what it means to be a human being. Poetry breaks the, rule, the rules. It moves language forward. All right. OK, so, you know, that's my that's my take on and I could keep going about, you know, why poetry. Right. Uh, um, but I also want to give you a practical reason for why we're studying poetry. Originally on the syllabus, we had it for three weeks. You know, we're going to have to shorten it to two weeks, but we'll still get a whole bunch out of this. Right. OK. And uh, uh, what one of the reasons, the practical reasons is that most of you will be going to English 1B, right? Okay, uh, um, you know, you can choose uh, um, <clears throat> English 1C. You can choose, uh, um, you know, I think there's a speech class as well that will satisfy uh, uh, the sophomore composition requirement. But, you know, most of you 
uh, from what I from from what I've known uh, my, my 19 years teaching over at City College is that you will go to English 1B and many of you uh, are in for a shock <laughs> because um, uh, you, m many of you don't know that English 1B is much different than all of the other English classes you've taken. You know, you've been focused, you know, in our class, we're focused on nonfiction writing, on topics such as justice or something like uh, technology, right? Or, um, you know, race. Okay, uh, uh, the environment, okay, you know, those are all topics, right? Okay, now in uh, English 1B, you're going to be studying literature, literature, right? And uh, that's always shocking for students. I see uh, many students. Why? Because they're like, damn, now, now I have to study, you know, uh, make-believe. Now I have to study imagination, right? And uh, I hope that this unit is going to help prepare you for what you uh, will face and will explore in English 1B. Uh, <clears throat> let's have some fun. Let's keep our minds open. Let's learn and share together. All right. Um, uh, we're not going to. So, so let me uh, bring out a, a few things right now. Uh, we are not going to be studying iambic pentameter, the sonnet form, alliteration, assonance, or other techniques of poetry. Our focus for this two-week unit is on the images and ideas embedded in the poetry itself. Your job will be to provide strict textual analysis of the poem. I want you focused on the language itself. The poem is your world. Now, today is simply an introduction. All right. Read the poetry packet. Find the poem that you Feel. I've chosen diverse authors so that you have lots of choices. I'll be sending you the essay prompt by next class session. You know, I did not want to overwhelm you today, so I'm not even going to talk about, you know, the essay that is due, okay? But just know that you will have to write an essay about one of these poems in the packet. Okay. Let's get to it. Let's uh, um, start with a review of the poems that are in the packet. Okay, you have, you have 16 pages worth of poems you can choose from, all right? The first one is called, well, and this is in no like uh, specific order. It's not like the first one is the best poem. Oh, you know, I, I, I jumble them around. You read through the packet, read uh, and, and choose the ones that really speak to you. Okay. All right. So uh, the first one is by William Carlos Williams, a poem called This is Just to Say. All right. Uh, justice, justice, okay? Second one, I give you back, all right? By Joy Harjo, who is our current um, a poet laureate of the United States. Um, <clears throat> this one is about courage, courage, okay? And, and just know when I'm giving you a little bit of review about these, of course, I'm giving you a subjective and objective perspective, okay, right? It's about more than just courage, okay? Uh, um, you you got to read through, experience the poem on your own to really figure out what is it really about, okay, all right? But I, I'm giving you an objective perspective because I've read this poem, you know, you know, 10, 15 times, right? You know, uh, uh, and also my own personal perspective because I cannot separate myself 
from, you know, my own feelings about what it means, right? Okay. And, you know, if you ask me to tomorrow, I'll tell you another, I would probably tell you another theme that really uh, um, reaches out to me about this particular poem, right? Okay. So I'm just trying to give you a little bit of context and maybe, hopefully, that will help you with uh, um, your choosing of the poems, all right? So the third poem uh, is The Bean Eaters by Gwendolyn Brooks. And, and th this one, for, for me, has to do with dignity, dignity, all right? Next one, The Revolution Will Not Be Televised by Gil Scott Heron, all right? And... <clears throat> This one, revolution, revolution, all right? Revolution and propaganda. Next one, Departure by Edna St. Vincent Millay, all right? And, and, and th this one is about, um, for, for me, uh, family uh, and sacrifice. Family sacrifice and shame all right uh next one i heard a fly buzz when i died by emily dickinson this one has to do with death and what you get at death next one waking up by jorge luis borges that has to do with consciousness consciousness obligations of the poet by giocando belli all right and this one has to do it compares and contrasts intellectualism against humanism humanism all right and we've studied that because we've studied uh, the Pedagogy of the Oppressed by Paulo Freire, all right? Next poem, Daddy, Daddy. Uh, and this is by uh, uh, probably her most famous poem uh, by Sylvia Plath. And, and it has to do with the patriarchal system. All right, the next one is a, uh, a poem uh, all it has is a Roman numeral attached to it, okay? Uh, and it is from a book called Absolute Solitude by Dulce Maria Loinas. And th this one has to do with uh, the sickness and fulfillment of love, love. Okay, next one. Praise to the Rich by Marina Setseeva. And uh, here she, t she, she has critique and also compassion for the rich. Okay, uh, next one. Oh, a very powerful poem by a uh, native San Francisco. Uh, this one is called The Course of Meal by Tongo Eisen Martin. And it has to do with uh, capitalism and cannibalism. All right. Okay. The next poem uh, that you can choose from is by another native San Franciscan. Uh, 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 this one is called Frisco Body, Frisco Soul by Tony Robles. All right. And uh, this um, is about Frisco. All right. Uh, and so, and so uh, if you're interested in that theme, please check this one out. Okay, uh, our current state of affairs in Frisco. All right. Uh, now, uh, the next poem <clears throat> is called To See the Fields and the River. All right. Uh, and this one is by a Portuguese poet. His name was 
Fernando Pessoa. All right, and this poem has to do with uh, uh, the power of feeling, right? And um, yeah, there is something uh, that that I think you can gain a lot from here if you're questioning, if you're questioning the limits of the mind. Okay, uh, next poem: If I'm to live, if I'm to live by Julio Cortazar, all right? And th this one has to do with, um, with, with love. Love and um, redemption, an, an attempt at redemption, right, okay? The next poem is called Wild Geese by Mary Oliver. And in this poem, uh, you, you know, she she, uh, uh, she 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 discusses nature, nature, and the power of nature to teach us. All right. Uh, and the last poem in the packet is also by Mary Oliver. It is a poem called Vultures. Vultures. And in this poem. Um, she, she looks at this, this thing, vultures, that is many times despised and shows the beauty of vultures, the beauty of vultures. So those are all the poems in the packet. All right. Read through the packet, question, right? Reflect, you know, right? Pick, I, I, I would suggest maybe three or four of them that you really want to study and focus on, right? Now, you are only going to be able to write about one of them, one of them, okay, uh, um, for the essay, all right? Now, I am going to give you a, a brief analysis of one of the poems. You're gonna see me engaging with one of the poems, and I'm gonna pick uh, uh, the shortest poem that's on this list, just as an example, right? Okay, and uh, um, note here, I wanna show you the richness of how you can analyze and engage with poetry, all right? And so this is the first poem in the packet it is called This Is Just To Say by William Carlos Williams, all right? So uh, check it out. Have it right there in front of you, ideally, as you listen to this uh, uh, lecture. I'm going to read the poem now. <clears throat> this is just to say. I have eaten the plums that were in the icebox and which you were probably saving for breakfast. Forgive me. They were delicious. So sweet. And so cold. All right. <laughs> okay. So what is happening in this poem? All right. I, I'm not going to give you any right answers. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to showcase for you how you can engage with the poem. I'm going to do basically what is known as right now in front of you a reader response to this poem, okay, all right? And I'm gonna start with the title, the words themselves, okay, all right? So, the name of the poem is called This Is Just To Say, right? And so, uh, I'm gonna give you a couple of ways that you could read the uh, title, all right? Well, one way to read this title is that um, you know, you could just look at that title and what, what, what the words seem to mean to somebody who's reading it like, like if it were a note, 
right? If it were a note or if it was, you know, a text message to you, right? You know, this is this is something like, you know, I'll paraphrase the title. This is, you know, this ain't, this is not that important, right? This is not that important, but I'm just going to tell you something really quick. You know what I mean? I, I'm leaving you a note. I'm leaving you a note to say something really simple. There's no complexity here. This is just to say, all right, okay, all right. This is just to say, you know, I, I'm gonna meet you at lunch, all right. This is just to say, hey man, I I, I ate your plums. I ate your plums, you know, right? You know, uh, no, no big deal, you know. Uh, that that's it, you know, right? Okay. So that's one way that you can read those uh, words, right? Now, I I would uh, uh, suggest to you that you know we've listened to the poem now. Uh, and some of you may may start feeling that there's more to it in these words than that this is not really that important. That that maybe this is important, okay? And take a look at those lines again. This is just to say. Literally, those words, all right? The word just is short for justice. I want justice, right? Uh, um, I'm doing something that is just, right? Okay. This is just to say, right? What I'm saying right now to you, this represents justice, Holmes. This, this right now is about uh, um, fairness. This is about um, hey man, maybe this is this is about payback. This is about payback. This, this, this is about this is 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 this about revenge? This is just to say what I'm saying to you is justice, is revenge, is fair. Ooh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not forcing you just to let you know, right? To think a certain way. But I want you to look at these words and open your eyes. Open your eyes, all right? Okay, let's get into the first stanza, okay? All right. Uh, and, and so we've got this first grouping of lines. All right, we've got one, two, three stanzas in this poem. Each stanza, that is a grouping of lines, all right, that's separated by an empty line, all right, okay? Uh, um, so that equals a stanza, all right? And so you see that you have four lines, right? Uh, and then uh, um, you have a space, an empty line, and then you have another stanza, which consists of four lines, an, and then an empty line, and then uh, uh, four uh, uh, lines, and that is the last stanza. So you have three stanzas of four lines each. Okay, now the first stanza says, I have eaten the plums that were in the icebox. Okay, all right, so let's analyze these words very very briefly, all right? Um, okay, I, I'm admitting, so here, here is a person. Here is one person admitting that they have done something. And what have they done? They have eaten some fruit, right? What kind of fruit? Some plums. Some plums, right? Plums are red, purple type of fruit, right? Plums are, they can be very sweet, but they can be very sour too. I got to tell you, I love sweet plums, right? Maybe not so hard, right? Uh, um, the ones that are really rich and red, okay? And, you know, uh, 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 this person who's speaking in the poem has eaten these plums and they were in the icebox. 
They were in the ice box, okay? An ice box, you can you can imagine, is like a refrigerator, okay? All right? You know, uh, 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 back in the days, <laughs> before refrigerators, they had ice boxes, right? Okay? And uh, this person ate the plums that had been inside of the ice box. Now, this is very relevant. Why? Because check out. This says something about the person who was saving those plums. The I must have some kind of intimate relationship with the person who put the plums in the ice box. Why? Because check out, you know, you, you know, you, you know this, you do not, you know, I can't come over to your house and just grab the plums that are in your ice box, right? In order for me to eat the plums that are in your ice box, we got to we got to live together, you know, right? You know, so I'm imagining there is some type of intimate relationship that is happening between the I who ate the plums and the person who put those plums in that ice box, right? Okay? So so man, you know, may, may, maybe they are a wife and husband, husband and wife boyfriend, girlfriend, may, you know, but th there's some type of intimate relationship going on, right? Okay. And just imagine those were some good cold plums. Second stanza. And which you were probably saving for breakfast. Check out this person who ate the plums, the eye. Okay, and for, for right now, let's just imagine that I'm the I, okay? I'll, I'll, I'll act like the I right now. You you all know I love to be a ham and I'll, I'll go act things out, all right? So just imagine me, right? So I, I ate these plums and they were some cold plums and I knew that the person I was uh, uh, in an intimate relationship with, right? You know, who I share an icebox with that, you know, let's just imagine, you know, uh, uh, the person w was saving them w and which you were probably. So that means I know, I know, I know that it's not an accident that you put the plums in there. You put, you put those plums in there with a purpose, right? Okay. Probably is uh, uh, significant right there. I knew that. I knew that you wanted to save those plums for breakfast, right? Now, why would uh, the other person want to do this, right? Well, you know what? Um, breakfast is a time when people wake up and they want to feel energized. They want to start off the day right. You know what I mean, right? You know, uh, they, you know, uh, uh, they, they, they uh, I've heard plums are good so that you can digest and then, you know, uh, you know, go to the uh, restroom, right? So this person was like, you know what? I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put these plums in the ice box. This other person, I'm gonna put these plums in the ice box and uh, um, I, 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 I'm gonna, I'm gonna let them get cold and when I wake up in the morning and I'm rubbing the muck out of my eyes and I'm over there and you know, I'm like, damn, another day, but guess what? Another day, but uh, another day, another dollar, but at least I got my plums. At least I got my plums, man. And, and I go to the ice box to go grab my plums. And they're not there anymore. They're not there. And all I see is this message. This is just to say, what does that say about me? Right? Because I said I was going to act. Right? Okay. So I took those plums knowing that the other was saving them for breakfast. Why did I do that? Why would I do such a horrible thing to the other when I knew that, you know, he or she wanted those plums, those sweet, juicy, delicious, cold plums that, that was going to make the day beautiful. And I ruined it. I ruined it on purpose. Why did I do that? Okay, let's see if 
the last stanza gives us any hint. Forgive me. They were delicious. So sweet and so cold. Okay, I am asking for forgiveness. Or actually, though, no, let me stop. Because I want you to look at those words right now. Am I asking for forgiveness? No, I am not. Right? I'm not saying, uh, um, can you please forgive me? Nope. I'm not saying, forgive me. Forgive me. This is an, uh, um, this is a command. This is an imperative statement. I am commanding. You must forgive me. Why must you forgive me? Check out. You must forgive me because I am doing the right thing by confessing to my crime that I ate your plums. I am doing the right thing by confessing. So what are you? If you're a good person, you are supposed to forgive me since I admitted it. Right. OK, so now now I backed you into a corner. You know, forgive me, right? And so now you're like, damn, I wanted those plums, but they're ask, they're they're saying forgive me. So now, if I'm a nice person, I'm supposed to forgive this person. But check out what I did. What I did was I said, and I didn't need to do this. So there, I, I want to think of a few ways about how to analyze the last three lines in the poem. They were delicious, so sweet and so cold, right? Because. I didn't need to tell you that. All I needed to say was, forgive me. <clears throat> now, I want to go through uh, what I think a lot of people think of when they think of uh, these last three lines, right? They think they were delicious. You know, this is a person rubbing it in, right? Wow, they're rubbing it in, right? They were delicious. Ha ha, ha ha, I ate your plums. You don't have them anymore. And guess what? I want to tell you that they were delicious. So sweet, so cold, right? And <clears throat> that that analysis does seem consistent if we are looking back at the um, the title. The title is "This is just to say." So maybe this is revenge, which some of you may know, and you could look it up, right? Uh, some of you have heard this cliche kind of, okay? It's revenge is a dish best served cold. So with that reading right there, is this a poem about revenge, right? That something happened in these people's relationship, right? You know, I don't know, man. You know, if it's a, a what, maybe one of them, you know, the 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 I the the person who was saving the plums, maybe you know, uh, she burned him, right? Or 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 maybe maybe she cheated on him. You know, I, I don't know. We don't know exactly what happened. But if you read it as if it's revenge, then, you know, this person thought of a way to get revenge, right? You know, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, they're, they're, um, they're digging it in when they say in the last three lines, they were delicious, so sweet and so cold. So, wow, that's a trip. That's a possibility. But I also want to explore another possibility, man. You know what? Uh, same thing, the title, this is just to say. All right, okay, check out. I, I, this is not about revenge. This is a poem about honesty, Holmes. Check out. I'm trying to be honest. I'm trying to be a good person. But I am also a human being, man. And sometimes I get tempted. I get tempted and I mess up. OK, just like human beings from time immemorial mess up. Right. And so I saw those plums and I wanted those plums. I knew that you save plums. And I was like, damn, I got to have those plums. I got to have those plums. And you know what? I I'm confessing that I ate the plums. But if I want to actually be a good person, if I want to be an honest person, I can't just stop by telling you that I ate the plums. You know what, man? Let me be totally frank. And some of you may think this is brutal honesty. But let's just imagine the I character in the poem wants to be 
totally just in this situation. You know what? Then that means I can't just stop by telling you that I ate your plums. I got to tell you the whole story, man. And the whole story is, look, I ate your plums. And you know what, man? They were delicious. They were delicious. They were delicious. They were so sweet and so cold. And you know what? Look, that is a true, honest confession. All right. Hey, I'm not telling you that that is the only analysis right here. OK. All right. Uh, but this is what we're going to be doing for the next two weeks. All right. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed this lecture. Uh, I look forward to seeing your paragraphs and to see how you engage with at least one other person in the class you must respond to, okay? So let me just review right now. After you hear this lecture, you must write a one paragraph reaction and you must cite this lecture that you le just listened to and you must cite the text. You can cite, um, this is just to say, uh, the poem, or you can cite one of the other poems, all right? Uh, if you would like. All right. Um, and also the other requirement is after people have posted their responses, their reaction paragraphs, you must write a two, at least a two sentence response to one of your classmates paragraphs, reaction paragraphs. All right. You can find all of this on the discussion board under um, poetry session one. All right. Hey, it's great to be back with you all. All right. Um, uh, take care, uh, uh, stay healthy. And I will, uh, um, I will be doing a new lecture soon, uh, by the next class. All right. Uh, take care all. Goodbye.